That's my take. Okay. Uh, Naomi Dambo, we, 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 we have also, as you said, Egypt has taken a, a sides because it's, it's supporting Burhan. Yes. Yeah. We have Russians as well. Yes. Wagner, yes. Already. Yeah, who's yeah. supporting Hamlet? Hamlet, Hem yeah. Yeah. And Russian, uh, with the Wagner are still on the ground as yes. it is. No, I, I was just reading because even from the US leaks uh, that Egypt uh, was to supply some arms to, 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 Russia, to Russia before. Russia. Yeah? Yes. But right now, they've changed tack. They're supplying arms to Ukraine. Yeah. How, how will also this exacerbate the situation on the ground? Because it seems now this is Russia uh, versus U Ukraine thing that is happening also in Sudan. They're supplying yeah. arms to Russia. Yeah, they're yeah. supplying arms to, yeah. to, to Russia. Um, the value just touch on the area um, that I really uh, feel, gentlemen, um, is, is the core of the issue right now. And if that is the case, and it may even go bigger than the Africans you are talking about, than AU and Egad. It can easily, the direction is taking, it become a geopolitical rival. It's already a geopolitical it's issue. Geopolitical rivalry between the US, Russia, US and Europe pit against Russia. And here's the reason why I'm saying that. The Soviet Union had incredible influence on Sudan. As you know, at one point, uh, the Soviet Union had Somalia, they had Ethiopia, they had Yemen, and they had Sudan as their core in this area. Given the current state of um, international uh, conflict, Russia need the Mediterranean and they need the Horn of Africa. Mm. Russia already have facility in Sudan for servicing their novel uh, um, uh, facility in there. Russia as the Wagner group as we're talking uh, that are digging gold and taking over to Russia. Russia as supplying arms uh, to uh, the uh, Sudan right now and recently as you remember the this uh, foreign minister of Russia traveled to Sudan and at the same time the US also traveled to Sudan followed by groups of Europeans that also traveled to Sudan so the issue between RSF and the military is magnifying and becoming a global geopolitical conflict. This is, we are in to a Cold War, gentlemen, and it's just beginning right now. So the issue is now bigger than Africa itself. UN Secretary General has got to get involved. AU has to be involved. IGAT has to be involved to create a framework which will allow um, Sudan to be neutral, neutral from Russian influence, neutral from American influence. Then you now, technically, realistically, you begin addressing the issue that affect the area because it's going to engulf several African states and the first Cold War will be fought on the continent of Africa. Uh -huh. If I may come to you, uh, Ambassador Rasas Moincha, and we dial back uh, you as the Deputy Chair of the African Union. I uh, know Sudan has been on the table when we had the larger, you know, Sudan before we had the secession of, uh, of South Sudan and uh, Darfur and, uh, you know, the Muslim pitting against the Christians. And then we had the international community saying we have to split. It, it seems there's still some sentiments that is still simmering underneath that uh, was <coughs> not really uh, between the North Sudan, the South Sudan. But right now, there are systemic issues that they're underlaying from the international community. Were well, these seeds sown even during that time that we had uh, the whole block of North and South Sudan? Mm -hmm. A very important question. Thank you very much for that very important question. But I also want to 
build on what my colleagues have said, and I totally agree with the contributions that have been put on the floor. Yes, indeed, as you ask me, when, when, when I was at the African Union, mm. I happened to have handled the file of Sudan for quite some time also, by virtue of my position. And uh, I remember traveling to Doha a number of times for peace agreements. I've been to Darfur uh, to see the, the forces there. Mm -hmm. So yes, I, I have some little understanding of it. And as a matter of fact, Abdar Amdok is a good friend of mine. Uh, he was serving as uh, number two at the ECA, uh, and I was number two at the AU, and so we were like brothers. We still call each other brothers. So I know a little bit about Sudan. Just like he said, and also he mentioned it, um, the history of Sudan is complex. You have to go back and understand that Sudan gained independence in 1956, but how that, what was the, the road to independence? Mm -hmm. It was Anglo-Egyptian mm -hmm. uh, rule of mm -hmm. Sudan. Mm -hmm. It was not colonized by one power, it was colonized by two powers, Egypt and, uh, and, uh, and, and UK. Mm -hmm. And so when UK gave them power, they left a state that was already dysfunctional, a state that had a lot of challenges, because as they were running Sudan as, as a, an entity, Sudan was already operating like two, not necessarily split, mm. but the southern part of it, which was largely Christian and animist, mm -hmm. were not, they didn't feel to belong in it because slavery was conducted over a long period of time. And these people felt, the southern part of it, which is South Sudan, mm. they felt that they, 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 they were marginalized. And mm. that is the history up to now. Mm -hmm. And so that's why they said, we don't want to belong to this family because we have not been treated as members of the family. Yeah, they were, margina went, they were marginalized. Yeah. Uh, and of course, we have the issue of slavery. Yes. That the South Sudanese, yeah. they acted as the slaves for the Northern Absolutely. Sudanese. Absolutely. Yes, okay. Yeah. Continue. That story continues. Now, moving fast forward, independence comes, as the general says. And I'm happy the general spoke because I wasn't sure I was going to say this uh, before the general spoke. Mm of the 67 years that Sudan has been independent from 56, it's only about 11 years mm. they have had some resemblance of peace. The rest has been war and war. And what are the issues? Mm. It is because the many tribes referred to have failed to live together. And that is because some regions, in fact, uh, to, to answer the question you asked about South Sudan, the four region threatened that if you allow South Sudan to go, we'll also ask for association. And so that is still an issue yeah. that yeah. Bashir allowed South Sudan to go. Yeah. But, but Bashir had opportunities. In fact, when we were there, we tried to persuade Bashir yeah. to say, build an environment for South Sudan not to break away. And the Garang was almost ready to say, look, if there is genuine, uh, you know, cohabitation and mm. we can all feel we'll that stay. even Garan can become president of Sudan, mm. we'll okay. we'll stay. Mm. But Bashir couldn't do it. Now, you remember even Bashir, in fact, they have held together as a nation today because of AU. Because AU uh -huh. protected Bashir from going to ICC uh -huh. when he was inducted. Mm. And one of the reasons, the crimes which had been committed in the fall, the generals that were inducted, he was told arrest or a judge or do something about it. He refused. Bashir never participated in those, but his generals did. Bashir refused, so he was now dragged to ICC. Africa Union protected him, and that's how the country held together. It would have been like Libya the yeah, other day. Yeah, yeah. So the danger now is for Sudan. It could also go Libyan way. That in the end, you have a dysfunctional state. And when all is said and done, I think let's now see what is the way forward. The way forward, I agree with Noah when he says, oh, it's bigger than the EU, let's bring the UN. Mm -hmm. uh, but here is my take. Mm -hmm. UN is dysfunctional now. Mm -hmm. And if you are talking of Russia having taken a position, yeah. US has taken a position, you cannot go to UN Security Council and have a resolution passed mm -hmm. because they revetoed it. Mm -hmm. And so UN can't. In fact, 
Perhaps Africa Union, and I'm not praising this because I come from that part. <laughs> Africa Union could have a chance yeah. if only it is mandated to say, look, like what happened in Kenya? Let me say this. Here is a situation. You now have too many players. I remember being, if you have too many players to a solution, no, you are not going to get a solution because they all have their own interests. You have named them. Yeah. You, you've named them. There is US, there yeah. is Russia, there is Qatar, there is Iran, there is yeah. everybody's there. And so, with all those interests, the best way you can do it is what Kofi Annan did in Kenya. Mm -hmm. When Kofi Annan came to Kenya, he told everybody, move away, stay away, and I am going to be in charge of these negotiations alone. Yeah. Everything was, went through him, and he kept, he, he, he had a ring fence around the negotiators, and he didn't allow anybody else to infiltrate and talk to them or talk to the system. And so he managed that process alone. That is the way we should go. And that is one thing I would add to what the president said, that ask everybody else to take their hands off, have one negotiator, mm -hmm.